welcome back guys to another moldy worm gaming <laughs> dlc review uh today we're going to be having a look at the smugglers run dlc okay then uh released oh, as the new dlc review at uh, the, the new dlc for gta 5 um so as ever i've got kyle here to um help me out with the cars and stuff um, so one of the new things, uh, I'm just going to get straight into this, uh, one of the new things that was added with the, um, the Smugglers Run DLC was the ability to buy a hangar. So if you go on Maze Bank for closure, so we've got the, the bunkers and the biker things and now we've got these green ones are the hangars. So I have one down here, this is mine. Um, so there's two you can buy in Los Santos International, and two you can, uh, three you can buy in um, Fort Zancudo. And in case you're wondering, this does allow you to go into Fort Zancudo without a wanted um, rating. But if you start like shooting the things, then you will get um, wanted. So I believe this is the most expensive one. Uh, so that's 3.25 million. And the cheapest one, which I have, uh, it doesn't actually come up, but it's 1.2 million. Uh, so the ones in Los Santos are a little bit cheaper. And in my opinion, they're a little bit better located. But uh, that's your opinion. And um, another cool feature, if you buy the one at Los Santos, is it will now let you have access into the airport. Which is quite cool. And one final thing I just want to say about the access into the hangars uh, regarding the um, 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 the Fort Zancudo one. Uh, so you'll, if you've played single player, you'll know that you can just smash through the barrier in uh, single player and just go straight into it. Whereas in online, there was like a big mesh barrier that you couldn't actually go through. Um, well, they've taken that away now, so it's just like single player and you can just crash straight in. So it makes entering the army base a little bit easier. Um, and obviously if you have a hangar there, you can get in with no stars, so that's even better. This is my hangar, this is one of the hangar, this is the cheapest hangar that you can buy. And so we'll just go inside. So it has a little cutscene, a bit like the bunker cutscene. It's quite cool. And if you have an aeroplane, it shows you driving it in. Or if you have a helicopter, it shows you uh, driving it in. I'm just going to enter. Kyle, do you want to come in? Yes, please. Okay, let's enter Dark with Kyle. Cold. I'm alone. So, this is the inside of the bunker. Uh, uh, I'm going to keep saying bunker, but what I actually mean is hangar. So, if I say that, then just... I mean hangar, okay. Um, so if we just actually go onto the foreclosure website and I pretend to buy one, or I can actually just renovate my own. Um, so you'll get various different hangar styles, as you can see here. But if you, so this is this is the stock one that it comes with. Um, and if we just go onto lighting you'll see there's two options for lighting. There's these sort of yellow lights or there's more blue lights. But if you actually go on, the, I think it only works with this one. You can never play around for yourself. But if you choose this hanger style, which is one that I already currently have, so it doesn't come up with a thing, and you go onto lighting styles, you'll get the normal uh, sort of lights. So they're not yellow or blue, they're just sort of normal. But then it will give you the option to add these little little lights in the back. So you can just have the white ones, you can have the green ones, which is what I've got. Uh, you can have red ones or you can have purple ones. And you can see they're all reasonably priced. Uh, so the colour of your floor will change, so I'll show you in a minute. Mine's white and this thing is black. Um, but there's various different ones that you can get. Um, so yeah that's that you can add an office and you can have like a traditional one or a modern one it's all just sort of like that and you can have a living quarters if you want to and you can choose from tradition or modern or um, and then workshop 
it's not really giving me an option because I bought it. But if you want to be able to customize the new airplanes, yes, you can customize the new airplanes. You're gonna buy, want to buy a workshop, and that will cost you 1.15 million to add that. As you can see, the floor graphics, mine are white and black, whereas in the thing they were yellow and grey. So yeah. So if you want to see Charlie then this is his uh, workshop you can go in here and find him he's usually around not in here he's over here he's slacking he's slacking apparently what and you know what we do he's Kyle knows what we do with slackers he's pretending to write on his notepad look at that he's pretending to write on he's not even got a pen Troy he's not even got a pen yeah he's drawing with his finger He's doodling. Okay, so moving on. If we jump into the airplane and you hit right on the D-pad. There we go. It will let you, well, if you bought the workshop, it will let you customize your plane. Now, there is various new planes that have been added to the game and they will obviously have more customization, uh, but we'll get into that in a moment. But for now, you can add bombs now a select few planes can add bombs and I find the best bomb to go for is the explosive bomb one because it is the cheapest bomb and two it is also the most effective because cluster bomb is more effect is more expensive and it is basically the same as the explosive bomb the incendiary bomb I don't think I pronounced that right but anyway uh, it's yes it's not very strong so if you've got a car that is armored it can withstand incendiary bombs and gas bombs aren't really very effective at all because it just kind of drops tear gas everywhere then you can uh, choose the color of your plane so you can change that all very similar or you can remove your plane from the hangar and put it back into Pegasus storage so this is um, obviously one of the old planes that you could buy. This is a Cuban 800. And I have the Dodo over here, which I have. You can change the livery for it. And I have also painted to look kind of like a Coast Guard airplane. So it's kind of cool. There are also various new planes that you can buy. So if we go on to ELS Travel, there are three new airplanes you can buy. There's the Alpha Z1. These are the Ultralight and there's the Havoc Helicopter. And these three airplanes can all have liveries and can have engine upgrades and all them various things. Then if we go to Warstock, there is also a few new aircrafts on here. We have the LF-22 Stalin, the Rogue, the V-65 Molotov or the MiG fighter jet and we have the Tula. So we're going to be taking a look at all three, all the planes in just a moment, because um, Kyle's going to be helping us out with that. Uh, but all these airplanes can have their liveries changed and all them various things. And I believe the Tula can also drop bombs and it can land on water. But I'll showcase that off in just a moment. There is also a brand new supercar the Grotti Vision and soon to come there will be the um, the Rapid GT Classic that's going to be a sports classic car and there will also be the Coil Cyclone which is going to be an all-electric supercar. If we go to Southern San Andreas Autos we have the Vapid Retinue which is very, very re reminiscent I can get my words right of the Mark 1 Escort. So it's kind of a cool looking car and uh, it's reasonably priced, you know, 16, uh, 100, 600 grand even. So that's all the new um, sort of things added. Now I just want to talk to you quickly about Pegasus aircraft. So if you buy a Pegasus aircraft, e.g., the Dodo, it will go to Pegasus storage. But if you want to go into your hangar, you can go into your storage and you can select the airplanes in storage and put them in your hangar. So that's what I did with the Dodo. And you can pretty, I think you can put any aircraft in uh, and it will let you do like very 
few things to them like change the color and that kind of thing um, so that's kind of cool so getting into our first aircraft of the new um, this new update we have the ultralight and it is a little um, paraglider with an engine on the back now this can have a lot of upgrades it can have armor upgrades there's new countermeasures which you can fire a flare so if a homing missile is chasing you it will follow the flare rather than your aircraft you can also upgrade the engine you can upgrade the handling you can upgrade the liveries to change that you can respray it so I'll just change that to chrome so you can see what's going on there and you can have different propellers so that's a stock propeller that's an extended one and this one if you cut the engine completely it will allow you to not be seen on the radar which is kind of cool you can also sell your aircraft so if you have a Pegasus one that you want to sell all you have to do put it into your hangar and then sell the aircraft and you can also add a weapon onto it if you so choose so the ultralight is a freewheeled buggy type thing uh, which when fully upgraded is actually a very good handling thing it's not very quick but it's a cool little thing to fly around and it can it can do some pretty cool stunts if you want to do that kind of thing but one cool feature of this ultralight aircraft is if you cut the engine which I am showcasing now when the propeller eventually does stop turning there we are you can actually glide infinitively just on the wind so you don't actually have to have the engine turned on for this aircraft to work so you could fly around like this and if you have the propeller that Kyle has um, you will and you cut the engine you will not be detected on the radar as I was saying the ultralight is a very cool little aircraft which when you learn how to fly it without your engine can be very stealthily so we're going to return to the airport to go to our next aircraft so the second vehicle that I'm going to be showcasing today is the 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 Alpha Z1 that's the name I get there eventually and this is one speedy little plane so let's take this thing for a little test flight and see how it handles in the air so when flying this aircraft it is a very difficult little plane to handle if you have ever flown the stunt plane it's very reminiscent of that but with just very extra handling it can perform barrel rolls very simply but if you let go of the joystick it will continue to do barrel rolls it's also a very quick little plane and with it being so small this makes it easy to maneuver in and out it can't have any weapons attached to it but just its sure speed and the ability to shoot countermeasures makes this a perfect little aircraft so I'm going to do another final loop and try and land it myself just to show you how difficult it actually is so let's move on to our next aircraft which is the Havoc helicopter the next aircraft I have to show you has just killed Kyle and it is the ha Havoc helicopter it's a very little small helicopter only being about the size of your actual player as you can see on the front it has a little minigun and if we just take off it is one speedy little helicopter the machine gun on the front yeah, is controlled by the pilot as it is only a one seater and is aimed by the helicopter it can also deploy countermeasures if a homing launcher is following it as the width of the skis on the bottom is very narrow so it makes it difficult to land I'll now demonstrate this So the trick to doing it is to allow your controller to settle and then let it slowly fall down on its own. Like so. 
So here we have the Tula bomber. It is um, a, a replica of the Sunderland flying boat, as this thing can land on water, which I'll shortly showcase. But it also features a very other unique feature, which is a vertical takeoff mode, which Kyle will now demonstrate. The propellers will go in an upwards direction, and then it will be activated as a helicopter. So this aircraft, along with the Dodo seaplane, can both be landed on water. Another feature with the bomber planes is the ability to open the bomb bay doors and drop bombs out of it. To land on water, activate the VTOL mode, close the bomb bay doors and fold the wheels up, and then simply plonk the, the aircraft into the water. Once it is in the water, you can put the VTOL mode back to normal and the airplane will be able to take off as a normal aircraft. Another feature with this plane is the gunner on the back, which can either be chosen as a double caliper machine gun or as the minigun as showcased. So there we have it, that is the Tula which is priced at a very reasonable 5 million. It can land on water, it has a machine gun, it has vertical SOS. takeoff, and it also has countermeasures. The next aircraft is the Molotov jet, which is very reminiscent of the MiG fighter jet from Russia. From first person, it looks very much like an old aircraft, which is something that I think is quite cool. <clears throat> this plane can be upgraded with homing missiles and comes standard with front mounted machine guns. It is also the uh, fastest jet now in the game and has just been exploded. So the next aircraft I have to showcase is the World War II aircraft called the Rogue. Now in real life it obviously wasn't called the Rogue, but it is very reminiscent of a World War II aircraft. This plane is also very unique as it is a two-seater aircraft, meaning you and your buddy, e.g. Kyle, can fly together. This jet also has missiles, which can be fired either by you or by your co-pilot. It also is a bomber, so you can drop bombs. It also has explosive rounds, so when you shoot at a ground target, it will make explosions. Another feature that is quite unique with the bomber aircrafts is the ability to go into autopilot. So simply open the bomb bay doors, press B or circle, and it will put you into the bomb bay view. When in this view, you don't effectively have to fly the aircraft. It will put it into an automatic pilot and it will allow you to drop bombs. Now you may ask, is the autopilot any good? Can it avoid buildings? Yes, it can. It will either swerve or go up and down to avoid buildings. And when you're finished, simply fold in the bomb bay doors or press B to finish your bombing. You can also bomb in third person or first person, but the bomber view is very good as it gives you uh, a view of the ground so you can see what you're bombing. So I'll now land this and get our final aircraft of showcase, which is the Starling aircraft. This aircraft is another unique aircraft as it only has two wheels, so it's effectively, effectively a flying motorcycle. I'm walking around the aircraft now just to show you that it has only two wheels. This means that it is balancing. It also is a jet aircraft, but it does feature a small propeller on the front of the aircraft. This propeller does not actually provide any additional flying power, it is just there for purely aesthetic purposes, although it does turn when in the air. When on the ground, this aircraft is very slow to move and it takes a long time to get moving. 
It features rear steering, which means it can be turned very easily. So much like the um, the Rocket Voltic and the um, the Rocket Bike, you must honk the horn to activate a boost, which will then allow you to take off. Now the propeller on the front is spinning, but this will not provide enough power for the aircraft to fly. When you don't have the boost activated, the plane is just gliding. Now it's a very fast glider plane, and it is also a bomber. The plane comes standard with machine guns, and can be upgraded to have missiles. Also, the boost on this aircraft can be activated whilst in the air and will recharge very slowly when in the air and much quicker when landed. However, the boost is very long, so if I press the boost now, you'll see that the boost is very long for this aircraft. As you can see now, the boost is still lasting for quite a reasonable time. Once the boost has run out, it will take a moment to recharge. One downfall of this aircraft is the fact that it has two wheels meaning it's very difficult to land it. It actually took me a whole another attempt just to turn this aircraft around to be able to land it. I didn't actually manage to get this aircraft landed so I just decided, decided to blow it up instead. So there are the aircrafts that I have to showcase you guys. There are going to be a few new vehicles coming out, such as this aircraft showcased here, which we currently don't have in the game, but will be called the Seabreeze aircraft. We also have this one, which is the Russeller aircraft from GTA San Andreas. So to sum up this DLC, I would say it is very good DLC and I enjoy it thoroughly. There's lots of new aircrafts that are going to be coming out. And there's also going to be some new land vehicles. With that being said, thank you very much for watching this short DLC review. I hope it hasn't been too boring. And if it has, let me know in the comment section. And I'll see you guys in the next one.